Hi, it's almost back to school. Do you sometimes blame yourself for not doing enough over the holidays? Well, if so, you're not alone. If you're like my clients and like me, obviously, well, here's what may be happening when you regret not doing enough during the holidays. Let's go. So today's little video is entitled Reject Regrets. Here I am, Nadej Cezana. People call me Nan, and I help teachers stop stress eating and savor their life. So today we're going to explore the problem, then the cause, and finally, the most important, the solution. So maybe you find yourself thinking, believing, I should have done more during the holidays. Very common, and that's okay. What's important to know is that our thoughts create our feelings. What that means is that when you're thinking, I should have done more during the holidays, if you believe that sentence, you're probably feeling full of regret. It's good to know because our feelings drive our actions. Which means that when we feel regret, chances are we focus on the negative. Here's how it can show up. Maybe we focus on the gap. Let me explain. So focusing on the gap can mean focusing on the negative, what I didn't do. Like for instance, the shelf is still a mess, the paperwork remains to be filled, that lesson is not over yet. And I compare my to-do list, what I wanted to do with what I did actually, and especially what I didn't do. I can also compare myself to others like a colleague, she's always so organized, she is reliable, I wish I was more like her. So it's a way to judge myself. The second way we can focus on the negative is to predict the worst. Predicting the worst means that we expect that going back to school is going to be problematic because we didn't tick those items on the to-do list. And what's interesting is that very often we do not plan actions to actually make it better. On the contrary, we may distract ourselves when we focus on the negative because we're feeling regretful. What that means is that when I feel bad, I don't want to feel bad. So I try to avoid that emotion by spending a lot of time on something that's absolutely not on my to-do list. It can be games, it can be chocolate, it can be books, it can be my phone, it can be TV. I distract myself. And it's good to know because our actions create our result. For instance, when I focus on the negative, which is my overall action, then the result is I prevent myself from doing more. So let's recap a little bit. So we're going back to school soon, probably on the 5th of September, if you're in the UK, and you may have had a written or just in your head to-do list. You've ticked some items, you've done some things, and there are some things that still remain to be done. And maybe you're telling yourself, I should have done more. We've seen that when we believe that sentence, chances are that we feel regret. And when we feel regret, we tend to focus on the negative. When we focus on the negative and actually don't take action, we are preventing ourselves from doing more. And we can see that the thought is creating the emotion, which is driving the actions, which are creating the result. Or we can take a kind of shortcut and see that the thought here, I should have done more, is actually creating this result of preventing ourselves from doing more. Our thoughts create our results. So when we think and we, when we believe I should have done more, as a result, we prevent ourselves from doing more. So let me go back to that, what we call the model from Brooke Castillo, who is the founder of the Life Good School. Circumstances are things that are, are there in the world, like the date of, for going back to school and a to-do list that I wrote a few weeks ago. And when we have those circumstances, we may, they may trigger a thought. So we may think a sentence in our head. When we think and believe that sentence, it creates a feeling. This feeling drives our actions and those actions create our result, which means that the thought we're thinking about, the circumstances, the date, the to-do list, actually this thought is creating a result. The good news is that 
circumstances are neutral. So when I say the circumstances are neutral, it means that the date on the calendar is not what's creating regret for us. The to-do list, the items we checked, the items we didn't check, they can't create that feeling of regret. A date, whether it's going back to school or anything else, is just a date, a moment in time, a number on the calendar. A to-do list is just a list of words, maybe with an order, a collection of signs, basically, numbers and letters on a piece of paper. So the date on the calendar, the to-do list, they can't create an emotion. They're just a bunch of signs somewhere, right? They can't generate an emotion, be it regret or pride. It's impossible. So that's what I mean when I say circumstances are neutral. But, or thoughts about the circumstances are not neutral. So if a date on a calendar or a bunch of words on a piece of paper can't make you regret anything, why are we full of regret? Why are you full of regret? Well, it's because you're telling yourself, we're telling ourselves, I should have done more. That's what's creating regret for you, right? These emotions coming from the words you're telling yourself about the date on the calendar, about going back to school, about the to-do list, about the items not ticked, right? Regrets come from or interpretation of signs on a piece of paper. But here's the good news, our thoughts are optional. So the good news is that our thoughts are optional. You don't have to regret anything, especially since we've seen that when we regret not doing enough, we actually prevent ourselves from doing more. So regret doesn't help us move forward, quite the opposite. But why? So there are three problems within that sentence, I should have done more during the holidays. The first of all is that it's past focus, then contains an obligation. And the third one is that it focuses on what is not real. So this sentence is past focused. I should have done more. But as far as I know, we can't change the past. There's no time machine yet, right? So what's the point? of thinking I should have done more when we can't do nothing about it. That's the first thing. The second thing is that maybe you've noticed I should have done more, right? There's a should in there. And whenever we're thinking in terms of should, or I have to, I need to, I must, there's a quite high chance that we're actually creating constraint that makes us feel uh, even further away from what we wanted to accomplish. What I mean by that is that when we're thinking, I should do this, we actually run the other way, right? And the third problem is that there's nothing real in this sentence. I should have done more. Yes, but it implies that I didn't do enough, which is still an interpretation. And it's an interpretation of what I've done, what I haven't done, right? And that's not serving us. What would have been enough anyway? Checking all the items on the list didn't happen. So what's the point? So what do we do now? Here's a solution. The first step is to think about what you did really do during your holidays. List the tasks, right? And the second point would be to ask yourself in what ways what you actually did during the holidays was actually the very best thing for you to do. So for instance, during the holidays, one of the things that I did was to read tons of novels. Maybe not tons, maybe five, ten, right? And that was the very best thing for me to do because that's really what I needed. I really got some rest. And the third point is that I've got plenty of stories to tell. I've got lots of stories in my head now, and that makes me feel super happy. So what are the benefits for you to answer those two questions? Well, I can see three benefits. First, it makes you focus on the positive, right? What went well. Then it makes you focus on the gain, what you're bringing back from the holidays that's going to serve you now, right? And the third one is that it's probably making you feel happy 
you did do something, you, it was good, it was perhaps the best decision ever. And chances are, if you're convinced it was this way, then you're feeling happy. So now it's your turn. What I'd like you to do is to first open your mailbox, then type my email address, which you can see here, nscoaching at outlook.fr. Yes, because I'm French, as you've probably noticed. And the third and main point is to send me one, and just one, simply one, only one reason why one thing you did during your holidays was the very best for you. And for you in the moment, for you today, and for you going back to school, and maybe for the whole school year. Congratulations on watching this video until the end. Right, it tells us that you really want to feel better about going back to school, and you should. This is exactly what I wish for you. So my name is Nadej Cezana and I go by Nan. The illustrations were from Cian Cezana and I really want to thank you so much for watching this video again. If you liked it, well, please share it with one colleague of yours, one of your favorite colleagues. And if you didn't like it, if you thought it was not really helpful, well, then share it too, please, by all means. But maybe to one of your colleagues that you want to annoy. Thank you so much and have a beautiful day and enjoy going back to school. Bye.